Chapter 8. An Ordinary Life Peter sat in the theatre and watched MJ. He was enjoying the play so much. At one moment, MJ saw Peter. They smiled at each other, and for a few seconds she forgot her lines. After the play, they walked through Chinatown together. You were so wonderful, he said. You look different, she said. Well, I cleaned my shoes, I washed my clothes, I did my homework. I do my homework now. Do you want to get some Chinese food? Peter, I'm getting married. You once said to me, I love you. Back then, I couldn't be with you. There were things I had to do, but I don't have to do them now. You're too late, she said. Will you think about it? Think about what? You and me. There never was a you and me, Peter. You don't understand. I'm not an empty seat anymore. I'm different. I have to go. MJ got into a taxi. She looked back at Peter. You are different, she said, and closed the door. Betty Brandt took the street cleaner into Jonah Jameson's office. He was carrying something in a brown paper bag. He put the bag on Jameson's desk and took out Spider-Man's clothes. Where did you get those? shouted Robbie Robertson, Jameson's number two at the Daily Bugle. In the street, the man explained. Jameson couldn't believe his eyes. Spider-Man no more? This was front page news. I'll give you fifty dollars for them, he said. Only fifty dollars, said the street cleaner. All right, one hundred dollars. Miss Brandt, take this man away and give him his money. It was two years since Uncle Ben died. Peter sat at the table in Aunt May's home and she gave him a cup of tea. It was all my fault, Peter, she said. You wanted to go by train that day. Uncle Ben wanted to drive you, and I didn't stop him. Peter decided to tell her. Aunt May, it was my fault, said Peter. I didn't go to the library that day. I went somewhere else, to win some money, to buy a car. I wanted to look good for MJ. It happened so fast. I won the money, but the guy didn't pay me. Then another man took all the money. I didn't try to stop him. I let him go. He wanted a car. He tried to take Uncle Ben's. Uncle Ben said no and the man shot him. I held Uncle Ben's hand when he died. Peter was crying now, and he took Aunt May's hand. I've tried to tell you so many times, he said. But Aunt May took her hand away. She had no words to speak. She looked sadly at Peter. Then she stood up and went quietly upstairs. Down by the Hudson River, Doc Ock was finishing his new fusion reactor. He stood back and looked at his work. Just one more little job, he said. All I need now is the tritium. Harry Osborne was in his father's old room. He was looking at newspaper stories about Spider-Man, and he was drinking. Suddenly there was a loud noise outside. Thump! And then another. Thump! Harry went outside. Suddenly, a metal arm appeared. It pushed Harry to the ground. Hello, Harry, said Doc Ock. Otto, what do you want? Tritium, but I need more of it this time. Ock took Harry with one of the arms and held him out over the street. The street was a long way down. Stop, cried Harry. Bring me Spider-Man, alive. Then I'll give you the tritium.
How do I find him? asked Ock. Peter Parker, said Harry. He takes pictures of Spider-Man for the bugle. He can tell you. Ock was already on his way. Don't hurt Peter, Harry shouted after him. But Doc Ock wasn't listening. Chapter 9 Where is Spider-Man? Peter walked along the street. It was cold, and he pulled his coat around him. He saw a newspaper. Crime up, 75%, it said. Where is Spider-Man now? And then he heard people shouting. People were running past him. He followed them and saw a building on fire. Peter was going to take off his street clothes, and then he remembered. He was Spider-Man no more. There's a child on the second floor, someone cried. The firefighters weren't there yet. Spider-Man no more, thought Peter. But Peter Parker can still help. He ran quickly into the building. Inside, he heard the child crying. The heat was terrible. Peter found the little girl and carried her down the stairs. The stairs fell into the fire behind them. Back in the street, he gave the girl back to her parents. You did well, son, said a firefighter. Another firefighter came up. Someone on the fourth floor didn't get out. Peter heard this, and he felt so bad. The next day, Peter got a message from Aunt May. When he arrived at her house, there were boxes of things all over the garden. What's going on? he asked. The bank gave me another few weeks, she explained. But I'm moving on. I found a small flat. Why didn't you tell me? I can look after myself, Peter, said Aunt May. And young Henry Jackson from across the street is helping me. He's carrying my boxes, and I'm paying him five dollars. Listen, about my last visit, Peter started to say. Oh, we don't need to talk about it, said Aunt May. It was difficult for you to tell me, so thank you. And I love you, Peter. Young Henry Jackson came for another box. Hi, Henry, said Peter. You take Spider-Man's pictures, right? Henry said. Where is he? He, um, wanted to try other things. He'll be back, right? asked Henry. I don't know, answered Peter. Henry wants to be Spider-Man when he grows up, said Aunt May. Children like Henry need a hero. We all do. And I believe there's a hero in all of us, making us do the right thing. Does she know, thought Peter. Back in the city, Peter took a lift to the top of a tall building. Do I still have a hero inside me, he asked himself. He looked across to the next building. I can do it, he thought. He ran fast to the edge of the roof and jumped. He flew across towards the next building. He felt great. Whoa, I'm back, I'm back, he shouted. But then he started to fall. Down he went, faster and faster. Luckily, there were washing lines between the buildings. He caught one and swung down the rest of the way. He crashed into a wall and fell between two cars. Oh, my back, my back, he cried. John Jameson and MJ were sitting in MJ's flat. They were getting married soon, and they were talking about their big day. Don't you want to invite your friend, the photographer? asked John. He's not my friend. He's just a really stupid guy, said MJ. She came over to John and looked into his eyes. What was she looking for? Put your head back for me she said to him. Then she kissed him. Once, a long time ago, she kissed Spider-Man this way. 
this time wasn't as good. MJ sat in the window of a cafe with a cup of coffee. Peter walked in. Hi, said Peter. Thanks for coming, MJ smiled. Is everything okay? asked Peter. MJ found it hard to answer. Do you remember, after my play at the theatre, you were different that night. I didn't want to listen, but I thought about it. MJ looked into Peter's eyes, but Peter looked away quickly. Listen, he said, there's more for me to say. I can't be there for you, MJ. Do you love me or not? she asked. I don't, his mouth said. His eyes said something different. MJ moved closer to Peter. Kiss me, she said quietly. I need to know something, just one kiss. MJ closed her eyes and moved towards Peter. Peter wanted to kiss her so much, but he was listening to his spider sense. Something terrible was going to happen. Suddenly he took MJ in his arms. He pulled her with him to the floor. Half a second later, a car crashed through the big glass window of the cafe. The car turned over above their heads, then crashed into the floor behind them. They were still alive. Then they heard a loud noise. Thump! And then again. Thump! In the street outside, people were running and crying out. Then Doc Ock appeared in front of them. Peter Parker, he smiled. And the girlfriend. What do you want? asked Peter. Suddenly a metal arm moved forward and lifted Peter up. I want your friend Spider-Man, said Ock. Tell him to meet me at the West Side Tower at three o'clock. But I don't know where he is, said Peter. Find him or I'll kill her, he pointed at MJ. Then he lifted MJ in his metal arms and disappeared through the streets of the city. Robbie Robertson walked into Jameson's office at the Daily Bugle. There's still no news about MJ, he said. Sorry, Jonah. It's all my fault, said Jameson. He was thinking about the Spider-Man stories in the Daily Bugle. I drove Spider-Man away. Spider-Man was a hero, he said. He turned to look at Spider-Man's clothes on his office wall. Then he turned back and said, Spider-Man was... Suddenly, there was a sound like the wind. Jonah turned to look. Spider-Man's clothes were gone, and in their place was a web, a very big web, and a message from Spider-Man. Spider-Man was a criminal, shouted Jameson.